Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to teach you the basic rhythm elements that you need to know to learn to play the percussion. We're going to learn them step by step and in a practical way. So let's move on to the first one. So basically what uh, the polls tell us is first the speed at which we're going to play the song that we're going to play. And also uh, it tells us uh, what is the length of the notes or the rhythm figures that we're going to use to play our instrument. Uh, musicians for practical purpose use uh, the metronome. If you click on the metronome, the metronome is going to give you a pause, yes? What I mean is something that is going to sound regular and it's going to keep the same along the time. So uh, the metronome measures the pulse or the tempo uh, in bit per minute. What I mean is uh, uh, BPMs. So uh, each bit of the metronome is going to be equal to one. Keep that information in, in mind because it's going to be important. However, the metronome is uh, very useful. It's important that uh, you learn to get the tempo in a more organic way, yes? Because it's okay to have the metronome, but maybe in a live playing situation, you won't have the chance to use the metronome to help you with the tempo. So there are several ways to address, yes? And to get the tempo of the song, yes? So I don't know, maybe you can clap it, You can take it in your foot. Yes. Maybe if you are stand up, you can walk it. Yes, or you can dance it. As you can see, there are many ways to get the tempo and keep it while you are playing. Uh, however, my recommendation is that learn more than one way to get the tempo because you never know in which uh, musical situation you're going to be involved. Uh, for example, maybe you are playing a standard up, so it's going to be really hard, yes, to take the metronome to your feet. Or also, if you're playing, you can clap it. You can clap it because you're playing your instrument. Uh, and maybe if you're sitting down, it's going to be hard to walk it or maybe dance it. So again, Try to learn more than just one way to get the tempo to have it as a result when you play. The second concept in which we're going to work on is in the rhythm figures. Yes, what I mean is any rhythm that you're going to play in your percussion instrument is going to build around the combination of different musical figures. Let's go back for a minute to the concept that the, each beat of the metronome and each pulse is going to be equal to one. And taking that concept in mind, we can build like a scales, yes, in which we can put the different uh, rhythm figures. So uh, the beat that is equal to one is going to be equal to the first figure that is the quarter note. So if we play the metronome, I'm going to be playing or singing quarter notes. Pa, 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 pa. So the quarter note is going to be in the center. It's going to be kind of the unit. So then you're going to find some uh, rhythm figures that are above, yes, uh, but I mean they are longer than one, and then below you're going to find some rhythm figures that are shorter than one. Uh, on the top you're going to find the whole note, yes, the whole note is going to be equal to four beats, yes, what I mean is three, four. Uh, second that you have on the scale is going to be the half note. The half note is going to be equal to, to two uh, beats. Uh, 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 uh. Under the quarter note, we're going to find the uh, shorter uh, rhythm figures. The first one that you're going to find is the A note. Yes, if the A note uh, value is equal to a half of a beat. Yes, what I mean is that in each beat you're gonna have two A notes. It's gonna sound like this. 
And under or above, you're going to have the uh, 16 note. Yes, in this case, uh, the 16 note value is a quarter of a pulse. So in each beat, you're going to have four notes. And you're going to sound like this. One other thing that you need to know is that uh, each of these rhythm figures has an equivalent uh, silence. Yes, what I mean is uh, one quarter note is equal to one and the silence of quarter note duration is equal to one. And the same you can apply to the different rhythm figures that we uh, saw. So let's move on now to the third concept that is really, really important, that is subdivision. What is subdivision about? Well, the pulse is like the initial uh, tempo measure that you want to use to play. But you have a second uh, rhythm measure that is important, this subdivision. And what basically that means is in which way you're going to divide each bit uh, of the tempo. So uh, in general speaking, you have two different groups of subdivision. On one side, you have the binary subdivision in which you divide the, each bit in two. And on the other side, you have the ternary subdivision uh, in which you divide each bit in three. So let's move on uh, to the first group, to the binary subdivision. So for that, I'm gonna use the metronome, yes? So, as I say, in a binary subdivision, you divide each bit in two, yes? So basically, you are working with A notes. So it's gonna be, for example, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In there, I'm playing the same that it's sounding. I'm playing quarter notes with my kashishi, and you have quarter notes in the metronome. Let's move on and play the subdivision. Yes, as you can see, now I'm playing one note that goes with the click of the metronome and one note that is against. What I mean is one, E, two, E, three, E, four, E, one, E, two, E, three, E, four, E. So here uh, appears a new concept. That is, when you, the note that goes with the metronome is going to be the downbeat, while the other is going to be the upbeat. Let's move on now to the ternary subdivision. In this case, uh, we're going to divide each bit in uh, three. So we're going to have a down bit and two up bits. I mean, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. What I mean is, down bits, you're always going to have one. Yes, because only one of the sounds that you are playing are going to go with the bit of the metronome. And then you have the up bits that are the notes that are against that. So let's try it with the metronome. One, three, four. One, two, three, 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 one, two. One, two, three, four. So why subdivision is so important? Well, uh, basically because subdivision is gonna define uh, the way in which you're gonna divide the tempo of the song, and at the same time, the way uh, that you're gonna place the different sounds that you're gonna play to build the different rhythms. Yes? So uh, binary subdivision rhythms and ternary subdivision rhythms are gonna sound really, really different. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm gonna play uh, a rhythm that uses the same sounds, uh, but 
I play it first in a binary subdivision and then in a ternary subdivision for you to see the difference. So uh, I'm gonna play first in the binary subdivision. One, two, three, four. There you have it, that was the binary subdivision. Let's move on to the ternary. One, two, three, four. So they are pretty different, yes? And um, that's uh, because of the subdivision, yes? Because subdivisions define the way in which you're gonna divide the tempo and at the same time define the amount of spot that you have to place different sounds and build rhythm in each specific subdivision. What is a bar? Well, I define it in this way. It's the play where music happens, yes? If you go to a sheet music, yes, you're gonna find the pentagram and you're gonna find one vertical line and another vertical line and in the middle you're gonna find the music that you gonna play written down so you're gonna find different types of bars yes as you have different types of subdivisions you also have different types of bars yes um the type of bar are basically uh, defined by the amounts of beats that you're gonna find inside the bar yes so you're gonna find bars that has three beats yes or two or four or whatever you want yes the most common one are in a binary subdivision, two by four, three by four, and four by four, and in ternary subdivision are six by eight and twelve by eight. But let's talk for a minute and talk about this uh, fraction I'm talking about. For example, uh, when you get a bar of two by four, you go at the beginning of the bar and you're gonna find this fraction. You have to understand that the number that is, that is below the four uh, means that this bar is uh, divided in quarter notes. The number four is equal to quarter notes. And the number that is in the top uh, tell us uh, how many quarter notes last that bar. Yes, in the case of two by four, it's a, a bar that is built around quarter notes and it has two quarter notes in it. You can apply that logic to the rest of the uh, binary subdivision bars if we move on to the ternary subdivision, we're gonna find a different fraction. In this case, we're gonna find the eight in the bottom, yes? And on the top, we can work with a six by eight bar, yes? What I mean is, the eight of the bottom tell us that the bar is built with eight notes, yes? And the number of the top, the six, tell us that in that bar, uh, this, or that bar lasts six, eight notes yes so remember this is a ternary subdivision and each bit is going to divi be divided in three so that bar is going to have six a notes uh, divided into group of three what i mean is one two three 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 so let's see how that theory applies to music yes we're gonna see different rhythms that are playing in different bars First of all, it's gonna I'm gonna play you a pandeiro rhythm of samba. It's gonna be in two by four. So we put one, two, 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 one, two. Let's move on now to a 3x4 rhythm. In this case, I'm gonna play a rhythm of Chacarera in the Cajon. And it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, Let's see now a 4x4 four four rhythm, yes, for that I'm gonna play a cuckoo rhythm from Guinea in the djembe and it's gonna go like this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three
to the ternary sac division rhythms yes in this case i'm gonna play a six by eight rhythm yes a tondero rhythm in the tumbadora tondero is a rhythm from peru so let's see how it sounds one two three one two three one two three one two three So to close, uh, I'm gonna play a 12 by 8 uh, reggae rhythm in the djembe, yes? Uh, that again is a ternary subdivision rhythm. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the most common uh, music bars that you're gonna find when you start learning different rhythms to play with your percussion instrument. So finally we arrive to the rhythm, yes? Um, to fully understand what you play when you're playing a rhythm with your percussion instrument, you need to know and understand all the rhythmic elements uh, we work on in the different stages of the video. So let's see now how those elements combined and build a percussion ensemble. First of all, you're gonna have the pulse. Yes, the pulse is gonna be regular. I'm gonna keep uh, playing all along the song. After that, you're gonna have the subdivision. And once that you have the pulse and the subdivision, you can start thinking about the bar. So in this case, we're gonna play over a 4x4 four four bar. So, to be able to measure it, we're gonna accent the first note of the bar. Now that we have all this set up, uh, let's see what uh, rhythm figures use the different instruments to play the rhythm. First of all, we're gonna play a surdo playing half notes. Yes, what I mean is gonna play in the one, and in the tree. In second place to the conga that is gonna play a rhythm in quarter notes. Congo is gonna come in and play clave using eight notes. I hope you find it useful and entertaining and that you can apply all the knowledge that I share with you in it in your own learning and percussion. I see you in the next video.